podcast. A podcast designed to fill your passenger seat with chat about classic cars, all recorded from my 1968 Morris Minor Peggy. I'm Becca, and today I'm actually on my way to meet up with a friend of mine. Uh, her name is Holly Wright, and she's been into the modern modified car scene for a while now, and we've had some really interesting discussions in the past about uh, the kind of differences in how the classic car scene and the modern modified scene are treated, how they are kind of carried out, uh, but also some of the similarities and perhaps some of the kind of crossover that we could take advantage of, both people within the modified scene and people within the classic scene um, could benefit from. So hopefully you really enjoy our little chats today. We're gonna hopefully have a go at driving each other's cars uh, and then have a little kind of chat about some of those differences that we've spotted as well. So next time you'll be hearing from me, we'll have Holly and uh, you'll hopefully really enjoy today's episode. Okay, so we're doing things a little bit differently today. I'm actually sat in the back of Holly's Renault Clio RS200. Correct. Um, and uh, we're going to do the podcast from in here. So we thought it'd be a little bit different for you um, and something uh, else to kind of talk about. Uh, we've just done a little drive round the car park in each other's cars. <laughs> that was uh, scary. <laughs> so I had a drive of yours yes. and it was really smooth, really nice, <laughs> really comfortable to sit in as well. Thank you. Um, which is something because the only modern car that I currently have access to is not very comfortable to sit in <laughs> and I hate driving it. So this is really nice. There you go. Um, and you drove Peggy, oh God. which was quite an experience. It was. I feel absolutely honoured, and she's a beautiful little car, but Jesus Christ, I um, I don't know, just because I'm so... I've never driven a classic. I feel very honoured to say that I've now driven a classic. Yeah. Um, and it wasn't exactly what I was expecting. I thought everything was going to be quite tight, kind of... Um, no, I think my gear stick has been described as a, a soup spoon in a bowl. Oh my god, it's a yeah, it's a bit of a nightmare. I'm not gonna lie to you. <laughs> yeah, it took some getting used to to kind of find where it was all sitting. And yeah, like, yeah. I mean, it's a little bit ironic though. I feel like we both kind of had not issues with each other's gears, but obviously because I have a custom gear knob, I have no numbers on mine. Yeah. You were like, "Where's reverse?" And I was like, "Oh yeah, duh." <laughs> That's yeah, it's be a like problem. little things that you don't think of that like yeah that when someone else is having a go at driving your car it's like oh yeah i never thought that that would be an issue yeah because you're just so used to it yeah but it was very fun i'm honored to say that i've now driven a classic car even if it was around the tesco car park but you know you get what you're given yeah and you know eventually i'm sure you'll you'll get out on a proper road with one. Oh, like, true true you never know once, this might be the start once you've had a little bit of practice and things in a few car parks then uh, you, you'll be all over the place hope so i hope so um so you had this car for since what may last year may last year i'm still very much a little baby in the car scene but yeah it's been a really beautiful experience it's opened up whole new groups of friends yeah um kind of just another kind of place of belonging i guess yeah that's really because i've said the exact same on multiple occasions about mm -hmm. like the classic car scene in that it's given me a whole new group of friends oh, it's yeah. got like people that you can get in touch with a whole new support network for different problems in your life oh literally like, if you're like something's going wrong with my car you're like help please yeah and um but so before that you had a fiat 500 <laughs> i had a fiat 500 um i did love her to death um i did feel sorry for my partner who did have to do a lot of work on that car because they are nightmares they to are not on. fun to work on at all um be but before i even had her name is lady the clear is called lady um before i had her she, i hadn't, wasn't really into cars at all really um we were always a car family but when i had my first fiat 500 who was lovely i absolutely loved my fiat 500 she was called oreo because she was black and white like an oreo oh that's so cute um and i do miss her from time to time genuinely. i love that like you've named your cars as well because a lot of people think that like naming cars is a classic car thing yeah. but it's 100 percent not like you've named both of your cars it's just a 
once you have an, an emotional connection to a car, oh, yeah, this then is it like needs a name. Like you literally, you don't just not name your kid. It's the same sort of thing, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I've got to be fair though. It is. It's pretty common in the modification scene to name your car. Like, um, I've got two friends called Katie and Will, uh, and they both have names for their cars. Yeah. Um, Will's is called Juliet. And Katie has so many Cleos, I can't tell you all of them because it would take too much time in the podcast. <laughs> but um, they all have names and they're all treated like babies. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's really sweet. They cost as much as babies oh as well. Oh my God, like, you've got, the, yeah. the amount of spares and parts and repairs. And the amount of trips to the Renault Specialist. Lists. Yes. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So if you weren't into cars really with the Fiat 500, mm-hmm. what is it that got you to buy a car person's car and then get into the cla- uh, into the modified scene. Good question. Um, so it was my partner. He's yeah. Ryan was the reason I bought uh, a Renault, which is really bizarre because there were times where I had my Fiat 500. I was looking at a new car because um, I'd had her for about three years at that point, and I was like, you know what? I want to change, but I also want to get into cars. It was like just dipping my toe in. Yeah. And I find it very ironic that I've gone from that to this. But it was my partner because we were looking at all different types of cars that are pretty simple to modify. So it was like, um, not that I didn't want to put in the work, but I was looking, we were having a chat earlier about this, weren't we? Um, I was looking about the getting the Abarth, um, either the Abarth 500 or the spec just above that. Yeah. um, Or a special edition because I was like, well, if I get one, I may as well, you know, go big and go home. Yeah. But then I did do some research into the amount of modifications you can do on the type of engine, type of car, even just cosmetically, you can't really do a lot. Yes. Um, yeah. So I had a chat with my partner about it and he, he'd been kind of bugging me about the Clio's for ages. Um, he was really into his Renault's for quite a while and before that it was his Peugeot. So Ryan's always been in the French car scene. Um, I guess it just took me some time to kind of realise kind of their worth, ironically yeah. enough. Ironically, I not long ago recorded a podcast with my friend who's big into his Renaults as well. Oh yeah. Uh, so um, this will be quite a Renault season when this comes out. There you out. go, Renault specialist, literally. There you go. Um, <laughs> have you done to your car yes so it's it's quite unfortunate we've got to film the episode before i go off and get my exhaust done but um <laughs> but it's mentioned now so it we is know mentioned. that it's happening i am getting a new exhaust uh, it is happening um so the current modifications that my car holds is i've got a toyo manifold on my exhaust that's the only different thing about the system uh, but it does does mean that it's a bit more like raspy you know yeah a bit sexier um i've got oh gosh i've got to remember what i've got now um yeah, uh, interior-wise, I've got a custom steering wheel, uh, custom alley gear knob machined out at my partner's work, um, <laughs> painted the gator. A lot of the interior stuff is kind of the basic stuff, just just because I wasn't really quite focused on it. Um, exterior-wise, I have a sunstrip, which is very exciting. Um, got Dectane, rear Dectane lights, yeah. um, which I only recently installed, but they're bloody lovely <laughs> like, they are really nice they re- look really good I on the back I could not be happier and I've known your car f- kind of since you've had it yes um, and frequently parked next to it <laughs> and so it's been really nice to like see all the little different things that you've done all the progression like uh, I remember coming in one day and seeing the like the three coloured stripes in the front yes, of your... Yes, I have the French flag in my front grille. Grill, yeah. yeah. Um, and the carbon fibre fits on the, the window Yes, pe- carbon fibre effect pillars, yes. Yeah. Um, so it's been like a real labour of love for you she in much has. the same way that anyone who owns a classic mm-hmm. would, would definitely understand. Yeah. Like there's there's money going out in all directions oh and definitely because it's not just modifications that cost mm-hmm. it's the the repairs and things as well oh totally um- the car's just been to a Renault specialist she has she's just come back from the doctor's bless her she um I, I had an injector fault and now I think obviously with the classics as well I think this would be a shared experience because you don't I don't know how your diagnostics works uh, 
um, you listen and you cry. See, <laughs> uh, my diagnostics genuinely worked one time by taking my car to an event, limping it there, oh God. running the engine, and somebody saying, yeah, that noise is your dynamo going, oh and God. that noise is, and that smell is probably your thermostat stuck on. Like, it was See? literally looking at it and smelling it, and that's how you, you work out what is wrong with a classic car. See, I guess, I mean, I completely respect that, because the amount of stress that would cause me uh, is ridiculous. Well, it is, because, like, I've driven to work some days and driven past places where there's an odd smell and oh gone, God. is that me? Is or that my is car? Is that your, your problem outside <laughs> world? Is it just the farmers spraying yeah, the fields, fields or stuff, or people yeah. burning things, or whatever? No, I know what you mean. So you 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 took it to the Renault specialists for diagnostics. Diagnostics. And... I had an injector fault, which is very bizarre because it turns out that on the petrols, that's not very common. It's more common on the diesels. Yeah. Um, oh, and yeah, I noticed that too. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's yeah, it was it was to do. We we couldn't even find it. Yeah. So I tried to sort of fix it myself in a way that I put some premium fuel in because we reckoned that some set, some stuff had just settled in the injectors wrong. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it was causing stuff. Or it was a very common thing on Renaults, I'm sure, as much as you know as I do, is just electrical faults. Yep. A lot of electrical faults. <laughs> My friend faults. is having the exact same problems with yeah. his Renault 5 from the 1990s. Oh, so. God, bless him. And yet he owns a Renault electric car, so that <gasps> sounds like a disaster. Has he got the 5 turbo? Uh, no. No, no, he's got, he's just got um, a Renault uh, automatic Prima. Well, it's very cute, it I can is, imagine. And, um, yeah, and then he's got a Renault Zoe, which oh, is like... Oh, they're cute, the electric ones, aren't yeah. they? Yeah. They're very cute. Oh, that's, that's fair, that's fair. But, um, but yeah, he, he also faces many electrical gremlins. Yes, I think it's just, if you don't own a, if you, if you own a Renault, they come hand in hand. You, yeah. If you own a lovely Renault, you also have to have lovely electrical problems. Um, so when I took her down to Beanie Sport, that's what the, uh, in Milton Keynes, shout out to Beanie, he's literally saved my life so many times. <laughs> um, when, when I took her, even he couldn't get her to fault. So we reckon it was to do with the throttle body in the end. Yeah. So he popped uh, a new throttle on from another clear he had. And I've had no problem since, because I, the, the fault was actually very scary. Because even when I had my my Fiat 500, I, I hadn't I'd never broken down on the roadside. I yeah. Was very very fortunate. It was always on like the driveway, or we noticed it like massively ahead of time. Yeah. Um, which often came with a lot of broken bolts and seized pins. But I was lucky that it just wasn't on the side of the road. But um. But you broke down on the side of the road. I broke down for the first the time in this. In in this. <laughs> no. That's that's so it because. Peggy is also, well, I mean, obviously she's my first car, but I'd driven cars before that. Of but again, she is the first car where I broke down at the side of the road. Terrifying. And then you have the experience of trying to work out as best mm -hmm. you can. But in, reali in reality, for your car, you're probably not going to be able to work out much at the side of the road. Well, exactly. Luckily, I do have a diagnostics tool in the boot. I've got basically a whole, like, snap onto a box worth of tools in the boot just in case. Much the same as classic. <laughs> there you go. Um, so it's it's it was it was okay though because luckily when when I did have my first breakdown it was in the work car park so yeah. it wasn't anywhere terrifying on like a, a massive bend or anything like it wasn't anything to worry about really yeah um it but then um my my partner again because he was he's basically like my at home Renault specialist he <laughs> kind of came saved my life you know as usual um and when we got home we managed to limp it home which yeah. is fine um she faulted out I think it was twice after that as again after the first time it ever happened um, and it was a really scary experience actually um, you get really attached to those cars and like it, it, when you're in that limbo state of kind of not knowing what's wrong absolutely you're yeah. like oh my god it could be this it could be that it could be very and expensive you, as yeah well. you think it's the worst and then and then if it's the you're thinking oh god it could be super expensive mm -hmm. you're then thinking is this car still realistically worth this investment exactly and even though you're emotionally attached to it you're like is it worth still having it on the drive, drive. Yeah. yeah there's been many a times where I, I regrettably have to say that I I almost sold up um, and I say that like, I probably wouldn't have I'm probably just saying that but there was it a crossed lot of your times. mind yeah. and that's a, that's a like really scary thing because I I've said many times that like I don't think I mean, when I got Peggy, I didn't think this would be the case. Mm -hmm. But I don't think I could see myself selling her now. No, no and exactly. And even though it's probably not going to make financial sense, and my mum has said on many occasions, 
couldn't you just buy another Trafalgar blue Morris <laughs> Minor and stick the same number of plates on it? It's like, but that's not Peggy. But yeah, like I would know. Yeah. I would know. Yeah. And um, but yeah, you don't expect to get like that with a car, do you? No. And then all of a sudden you're spending more than it's probably worth Definitely. on certain I'm probably double her value in at this point. Yeah. Which is is not fun. Um, to think about at all. Not at all, no, because majority of it were my student loans anyway. So yeah, like they, they cost more than they're probably worth. We, mm -hmm. You, you want to like think about like selling them, but you, you can't. And, no, it's like, heart wrenching every step of the journey because it's like you have these massive highs and lows with the cars because it's like you've got to have these massive bills and you fix stuff but then you'll take it out on the roads and you'll thrash yeah. it and it'll feel amazing and it's like or, or you'll have like a road trip in it or something because you took this to like was it wales i did her first holiday was to wales uh, so was peggy's like, oh what a that, coincidence. yeah peggy's first holiday when we got her literally two months after we got her Adorable. we took her to wales and it two was, months that's ballsy <laughs> yeah <laughs> it was it was the longest i've ever driven before in oh anything and uh yeah but like it feels like an adventure when you're going in a car that you love driving. Yeah, the stakes are like so much higher. Like yes, yeah. it's, it's scary. But also, you've like had some other lows, like yeah. uh, an incident with a wall. I have. I'm. I've got no shame to talk about this. I think this is another big difference. I think in the modification, the classic scenes. This is a good. This is a good topic to start with. I had a bit of an oopsie daisy. Uh, I crashed. Yeah. Um, I. Basically, I, I started a different job at the time. Obviously, I was still doing my degree and everything, so life was yeah. a bit high stakes at the time. Um, I'd just kind of gotten used to parking at work and at home and having the car be relatively new to me still. Yeah. And I just started doing really early morning shifts, like 5 a.m. starts. It was pretty horrendous at the time. And I was going after work to my hairdressers, and her driveway is kind of like a little, like an, an L shape. Yeah. So I tried to reverse around the side of the wall and I didn't do very well because obviously I was in my sleep deprived sort of state and that's the reason I also attempted that turn in the first place. Because you wouldn't never have made do. that choice in the first place. Exactly. It was just kind of like a sleepy kind of stupid thought that cost yeah. me about two and a half grand in the end. <laughs> oh gosh. Which was not very fun. I bent in the rear quarter, obviously I scraped the paint off of it. Um, uh, and again, partner came flying to the rescue. He actually left work to come and get me because I was like screaming at him down the phone. I was like, I crashed my car. Um, yeah, a lot of tears. Yeah. Um, and ironically enough, I went to probably like a handful of body shops and stuff. And the only person that would take this car is the actual Renault dealership. Yeah. Like the actual Renault garage. And we kind of put a quote in almost just to like joke about and be like, oh well how much could it be really and then it ironically enough came out as the cheapest quote um wow so that was fun yeah got the body work done and you can't even tell like they they matched the paint color because a uh, lady is an ultra red she it's um a very hard color to match yeah so what we had them do instead was um match it to the color of the car currently yeah because of course I mean, Peggy's had some partial resprays and stuff in the past, mm -hmm. and she's whilst I've seen a, I've seen a brand new resprayed Trafalgar Blue Morris Minor in it. It's not the same colour as Peggy. No. And so it's a case of actually, if I was to get a partial respray on anything now, it would be have to be matched to the car colour rather exactly. than the the colour that it supposedly yeah, it like came out of the, the factory cars, as. Yeah. yeah. And it was it was a very stressful process, but it taught me a lot you know um, yeah because i i think i kind of have still have the excuse of like i'm kind of the baby in the car scene still which is quite nice yeah um because i've had lots of older sort of more pristine kind of car owners take me under their wing and stuff and um i'm quite young i'm only like 21 with this kind of car um and yeah. if you told me at 15 oh that holly at 21 you'd have a like a track car as your daily i would have laughed at you because i would have been like no i wouldn't <laughs> So, you know, I try and look at a lot of the achievements with this and the amount yeah, of... Yeah, like how far you've come and stuff. Yeah, it's it's hard it, it's it's hard to kind of notice the good stuff a lot of the time. Yeah. Um, when when you're kind of maybe in the throes of something bad, like obviously my recent injector, my injector fault and stuff, it made everything kind of hard to keep in perspective. Um, the amount of work I've actually done to this car to be able to make it 
what it is now. Yeah, and she's a pretty in good condition 200. Because yeah. I'll, I'll go to some car shows, and don't get me wrong, I'd never disrespect other people's builds and stuff, but you'll see kind of um, lacquer being an issue, or if they're if the car's more used on the track, you'll find that um, there's a few things that could be, I guess, in, in a better condition, but there's nothing wrong with that. So, but yeah. then I'll kind of look back at this car and I'm like, I've only had this car since last May, and look at all what you've done to it. She's in a pretty good condition considering, you know, she's not got a high mileage or anything. I'm very lucky, but you know, there's been a lot of love and care in this. And kind of to come back to something you said there it's really mm -hmm. nice that like within the modified scene it seems that like there's a lot of supportive older people yes um and like i'm really fortunate that i've come across quite a few supportive older people in the classic car scene yeah but equally there are people who are older who don't support younger people getting into classic cars mm -hmm. and that's like one of the biggest downfalls of the classic car scene is that there's not this support and help from the people that have had the cars for 50 years mm. um, whereas I guess being a newer car nobody's had it longer than anybody else even if they're older mm -hmm. so like it's a case of still everybody's learning together and being quite supportive yeah um but also people who are just used to the scene more even if they've been in different cars mm -hmm. are being helpful and kind of i guess you guys probably like have like us facebook groups where you can oh yeah put your panicked message in and things like that yeah there's a load of them i guess that's another little there's a little difference obviously being in the french scene i can't really speak for all modification scenes here yeah. i know the german can be quite different but in the French scene, we're quite calm. There's not a lot of kind of, um, how Com can I say this? Competition? Yeah, I guess, but yeah, there's nowhere, I've, not that I've seen in like the year or so that I've been in the scene, that people are being actively competitive and actively yeah. tearing other people's builds down. I guess that's, I guess I can see that as a difference again in our two scenes, obviously, because in the classic scene, you'll kind of have, I guess, these people who think that those with a classic, at, at, your age because obviously you're very young as well yeah and and there can be sometimes like a bit of disregard for people who are daily oh classics totally because are they yeah, okay just are they it. just wrecking the car by yeah. continuing to use it it's not going to be in the most pristine paintwork and things like that yeah so what does that mean for the for the future of that car well exactly uh, but in reality we're going to pour as much money into it as anyone else yeah, because we yeah, exactly. we love the car because we've got this connection to it because we're using it daily exactly but it is it is really interesting yeah. how do you find like events and stuff like when you go to events what are they kind of like for the modified scene so the, the, the biggest one i've ever been to is modified nationals i guess that's probably the most well-known uh, yeah large which weirdly show. i have been to as well you have. we've had many conversations about, about this, this. <laughs> like there's actually a podcast of when i took peggy to a modified and hot rod show yes. and it was the same show but it was the year before you went with your car exactly um I, I really loved Modified Nationals. I, it's very nice to sort of have, I guess, the underdogs of the car scene, which ironically enough, I feel like the modification scene is. It's like yeah, we, we, it's we are the ones. It's very differently to very the classic much, scene. We, we kind of get treated like we're, you know. All boy racers. Yeah. And <laughs> you're all like revving your like tits off. Yeah. And really dangerous modifications. Oh, yeah. That's another thing. Um, do you mind if I just pick up on that? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. On? Because I. I'm in, I think, what you'd call the legitimate scene. Yes. Um, I have many people that I know that who would have, I don't know if you mind me swearing, the, the certified shitbox. Yeah. Um, where in that kind of scene, there, there's almost like sub scenes where you'd have people who would cut their springs, who would, you know, um, do, do things the that dangerous, are dangerous things. Exactly. And it's just not, it's not kind of what we're about. And if you're seen actively doing that, you're almost kind of cast out yeah. of the modification scene, like the legitimate side, because we I, we understand the dangers a lot of the time that we're in. Yeah. Um, with doing track events, with doing stuff, you know that. Just excuse me, I'm just going to be a boy racer for a second. <laughs> um, yeah, we're not we're not boy <laughs> racers, but I am actually just going to swerve around this car that's being a nuisance. Exactly. Um, I look, I live up to my reputation, you know. 
um, we get a lot of the short end of the stick. Where because of a, a, a small few that exactly. aren't doing things properly. Yeah. When actually you are kind of as as many good people as there are as many good people in the classic car scene because it's not talked about that there are people that bodge and like there's jokes in the classic car scene about chicken wire and filler oh really like that's genuinely how some people repair some structural parts of their car and there's been so many people i know who've bought cars and then have gone to do work on them and, and they found, found yeah. essentially that one wing is paper mache and things oh gosh and so there there are those people out there that are restoring classics for a quick turnaround of money exactly. and doing it terribly so you don't hear about that at all no though. like i think the, the ones you'd hear about are people in the modification scene you know doing these illegal like car meets and stuff or when, and then when they look at the actual cars themselves they always zero in on the ones that are doing it improperly but you never ever get told about people who are and maybe are arguably I don't know ripping people off with restoring them yeah in a poor way yeah you never I, hear about that absolutely and it's it yeah it's not fair on either scene to reflect it in a a totally wholesome light or a totally negative light because exactly. the wholesome light on the classic car scene is going to mean that people are naively buying classic cars not aware of what they they could be put up against well exactly and people in the might be missing out on enjoying a modification scene mm -hmm. because they don't think it's safe and also ironically i was recently at a show where they ended the show with what they call uh, a rev off usually they had to oh. cancel it because it was so uh, hot and the ground was so dry that they were worried about causing sparks. But traditionally, oh they have a rev off for all the classic cars that are there. Wow. And yet, revving and things out of events are modified. Especially is, with loud exhausts. Yeah, is massively frowned upon. And not massively. being funny, most classic cars don't have quiet exhausts. No, no, exactly. Even when Peggy pulls up, I'm always like, wow, there's Peggy, because I can hear her before I can see her. Yeah, absolutely. She has frequently referred to as a tank um, by my <laughs> parents because Very of the accurately. amount of noise that she makes. <laughs> exhaust at the moment like she's not quiet and especially when she's cold she can pop she can bang um and i've had a lot of you know scowling grannies looking at me and stuff which i feel awful about don't get me wrong um i'd never ever want to drive this to actively upset people yeah is that's not the point and that's kind of i guess the point of the whole modification scene we'd never do this to upset anyone you're doing it because you enjoy it yes. which is the exact same reason that people drive restore and even modify classic cars like somebody at some point modified peggy to have the five-speed gearbox to exactly. have the racing manifold because that made that car more enjoyable oh yeah for them and so they did the the exact same thing as you've done to this car to make it more enjoyable to you exactly <laughs> Being also, uh, I guess another avenue is female owned because obviously we're both yeah. females into very different scenes. Um, I'm very fortunate to say that in the French scene, I have a lot of female owned friends, you know, that have the, the same car as me, or if not a bit better. Or um, my friend Katie, as I mentioned earlier, she's got a Mark II version, um, and she is amazing. She she can do so much with it. She's like, she's just so intelligent. Like I can't yeah. even describe it in words. And um, and it's really quite nice and I'm very fortunate to say that I have had that representation within my scene but I know it can be incredibly difficult for some other female owned cars yeah to find fellow female owners mm -hmm. to and also to get respect when you go to a garage oh, or to definitely. like get get feedback and and help from others that exactly. don't think that you actually do the work on your car yes. or when you go to events and somebody talks to your partner about your car that's, rather than you. Yeah, that's the that's, one that gets me. <laughs> we've solved that now by Jamie having his own car. There you go. But it's it's not totally foolproof. No. Um, oh, there's a Nissan GTR there as well. How fitting. 
Oh my god. Hello. I'm actually going to let you go in front of me because that's my favourite. And his car. number plate is also GTR. Her number her plate. Number her plate. number plate! Ah! What a bad bitch. Love that for her. Well, that's. That, see, that's terrible of me to just ass there you assume go. that it was. Uh, that it was a, a guy in there, but there no, you go. she looked awesome. She did look really cool. Good for her. Um, I guess actually that's a good avenue to talk about something else to do with female owned cars. Cause a lot of the time I actually ironically find that if you are a female owned car and something goes wrong, I don't know if you have this as well, Becca, but people tend to think that it's your driving rather than just something mechanical. Yeah, cool. yeah maybe. And I've only just recently found this out. Um, you know, I had like the experiences and stuff with the injector fault and I, I, ironically enough, I had people being like, is it just the way you're driving it? Are you accidentally putting your foot half on the accelerator when you're putting your brake down to start the car? So it throws the um, throttle body sensors off and stuff. And I'm like, no, no, <laughs> I, I know do how that. to drive the car. Exactly. <laughs> like, I, I'm just as good as the rest of you are, you know, and there's a very sort of there's a joke that goes around my house and stuff and, and our friendship groups that because um, my, my friends aren't really into cars. Yeah. Um, I kind of have a car friends and normal friends. Um, they're not really into cars, but there's a joke that floats around all of the scenes in my life, I guess, that my partner would probably drive this car better than I would. And I'm not quite <laughs> sure why, considering yeah. I drive this car every day of my life. <laughs> yeah. Like, Jamie is surprisingly good at driving Peggy, and I would say overall he is a better driver than me, but that's only, I think, because he's a newer driver. Yeah. Whereas I've been driving for longer, so I do things that are probably bad, but he I know I habits. can get away with. Yeah, exactly. Um, which isn't a good thing to probably admit. No, no, like, no, not on your own podcast, you know, Becca. You, you know your car, don't you? You totally. know that you can jump from one gear to another gear in a way that that or like you can brake in a certain way mm -hmm. and things like that or you can get with so much engine braking yeah and, you know yeah and, and you know when to brake mm -hmm. for like a, a traffic lights or, or when you see something mm -hmm. whereas yeah i think also just being a braver driver means that you sometimes do scary stuff that perhaps isn't advised like when well, exactly. i went up some of the scary passes in the Lake District and stuff. Oh yeah. That like I I can't have seen Jamie at that time doing it. He might do it in four or five years with his car, mm -hmm. but he would have to like get to that. Oh yeah, it level takes, of experience. It as takes well. courage. Like obviously, I've only just driven Peggy, and I can even as I've been driving for four years. And I can even say that that was probably the scariest drive of my life. Like, <laughs> like, I'm so sorry. No, no, it was brilliant and it was good, and I needed to do it just to kind of. Because if you're in kind of any sort of scene, I feel like you should pay homage to the classic scene. Yeah. That's kind of where everything came from. Yeah, absolutely. Know. But also, I think that the classic scene needs to start looking to some of the things that happen within the modified scene. Oh, really? To improve and make sure that it's there for going forward. The support True. that like younger people get within the modified scene is something that the classic scene is working on. Okay. But it's not there yet, I don't think. And also, I think you've said in the past to me about how you often go to events that are like French car events, yes. um, rather than kind of, these are all the Clios yes. in one place. Like you will have all the Clios perhaps parked together at this French event, mm -hmm. but it isn't just one mark of car, no. which has been the traditional thing for a lot of classic car clubs for years. And I think it's losing the interest of some of the young people. Um, going forward it's sometimes more interesting even if it is okay let's look at all of the cars that came from this one company over the last 100 years rather than all of the just one marker model totally um, uh, and yeah it's it's something that's hopefully being worked on but it's you can see the success of it in the, in the modified scene yeah I mean because if you go to any kind of modified car meet you're, even if it's an unofficial one you'll just kind of see just a bit of everything, everything variety like a buffet of cars whereas I and there's appreciation for all of the cars that are oh, there totally, and you like, can talk to people about their cars yeah and you'll make new friends and you'll get advice about if you've got a similar sort of car because i guess i'm not sure if it's the same with classics but a lot of parts obviously for this sort of thing is they're yes. transferable from other cars it's the parts bin isn't it yes <laughs> oh, like, oh, I've got this a indicates this, it's you know. off of a ford or like yeah it's and a lot of things are transferable so it's a, I'm, I'm I never really 
quite realised until you said that just now about like the lack of support for young people because I was really surprised when we first started talking about this that there's not you know there's almost like a bit of not shame but I don't know it's 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 very different for you to own a car compared with somebody that may be a bit older like yeah. maybe maybe was around when the car first obviously Came launched out the factory and stuff which and for know. a long time I think classic cars have lived off of the oh my dad had one of these or yes. whatever, but that's not going to last forever because eventually the people whose dad had one of those aren't going to be around anymore so they need people who are interested in the car for other reasons exactly. to, to get into it yeah. like yourself like you had no real connection to Clio's before you bought a Clio mm -hmm. uh, though your partner liked them that wasn't like a oh I've always wanted this car because it's what I've always known yeah it's it's a completely different thing. I feel like a lot of it sounds almost like it's like a safety net yeah. a lot of time in the classic scene. It's like, oh, my dad had this, so I'll also have this. Whereas I think you'll find whole families in the modification scene. And it's like my favorite thing to see where like the mum will have like a, a Vectra and the daughter will have like a Polo. And if everybody has a modified car, but they're so different. Yeah. And it's, it's almost like this beautiful kind of mismatched weirdness. <laughs> it's yeah. just, just it, charming. It the boundaries out and also mm. like their their little convoy when they go out so it's going to be so more interesting than Lovely. like uh, just just a, a, a one mark what well, not that there's anything wrong with a, a, a whole morris minor convoy they're no. great in their own right which is uh, stunning to look at may i say <laughs> i have seen one before and it's very stunning um but it's it it could be more variety and, and things to learn from each other when you've got that kind of mix yeah between our two scenes but the differences I feel like are so different and and the thing is those differences are uh, I think what the scenes could both learn from totally. like they could both look at each other in a little bit of a way and maybe we never know this podcast might be the, the start of those two scenes kind of looking at each other and going oh, oh actually we could we could do a lot more with that and yeah. invite each other to more broader events and, and stop having kind of so many like cut off years and things at classic events because mm -hmm. um, I think it would be so good to see much older Renaults part next to something like this yes definitely I think I saw a picture on your like Instagram that was like three different Renaults all like part next to each other that were yes. from different eras of Renaults like yes. design style and things like that mm -hmm. and so to be able to see that at an event would be like super interesting totally. and for it to go all the way through to the modern modified stuff um, as well as the earlier stuff I think would be fantastic. Well I guess you could also argue from this as well like with big car brands I think Lotus does this oftentimes if they have an event where they like launch their newest cars and stuff yeah. they will also bring out the classic cars and it's it's almost kind of like an evolution. Yeah the Lotus is having the, the parking next to each other and the, the, the honouring their heritage as Precisely. well as like what's coming out now and, and, and Renault are doing that with the introduction of the Renault 5 electric yes it's a massive charge to the Renault 5 turbo yeah, which is a beautiful little car yeah so cool and my my other Renault friend is very excited about that and would like <laughs> to add one of those to his his Renault collection that's very cool yeah. I need to meet your Renault friend I think you follow him I probably do I follow yeah. like everybody <laughs> But yeah, well, it's been really good to talk to you. I hope that people listening have found this kind of an interesting comparison video. I know it's something quite different for the channel yes. because we usually are very classic focused, but that it, I can't talk about the idea of us all mixing and merging if I don't do it myself. Exactly. Um, so <laughs> I've really enjoyed sitting in the back here and being <laughs> chauffeured around. It's been uh, lovely and uh, we've come at petrol prices uh, thank you very much Holly for the ride no problem I'm suffering too <laughs> don't worry <laughs> um, yeah thank you very much for listening drive safely and happy motoring